The year is 2012. I was visiting my grandmother one day to celebrate her 72nd birthday and in her bedroom me and my cousins were allowed to watch some television on her relatively small but functional television and it was on this very day that I came across a show that goes by the name of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. The first episode I ever saw of the show was Fall Weather Friends which even back then as a 12 year old boy I found to be quite amusing and it kind of stuck with me ever since I saw it on my grandmother's birthday. A couple of the reasons being that the show looked pretty colorful and lifeful and I had a surprisingly amount of fun with it. And yeah, this was around an age when girly things for boys were typically frowned down upon by a lot of boys. I suppose you could say that I was a furry long before I even knew that furries existed and that I was pretty unique at the time. Anyway, the show since then has been one of my all-time favorites. And with the release of a new generation, I figured now is the time to start giving the show some proper justice. Because this show had a lot of characters that I can relate with, the stories were incredible incredibly fun and enjoyable a lot of the times and the show even was not at all shy to explore some darker concepts. So I decided to give you a full retrospective on Friendship is Magic and have a nice journey throughout the world of friendship and fantasy that this show brought to us. Welcome to the Ponython, I'm Cohen from Phoenix Star YT and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Starting things off, we got ourselves a very interesting episode to talk about. The two-part premiere of Friendship is Magic spawns a lot of interesting things. The world in which the series takes place in, our main cast of characters, and... Nightmare Moon! <sighs> oh, my beloved subjects. It's been so long since I've seen your precious little sun-loving faces. Oh yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. But you get the idea, this is where the magic of this show started. That's all fine and good, of course, but is this a good start? Well, I guess there's only one way to find that out. As the title suggests, this premiere has been separated into parts. Part one is where we get to meet our main cast of characters for the first time, and part two is where they are going through the Everfree Forest, more on that later, to defeat Nightmare Moon. Nightmare Nightmare Moon in this episode came to be because of the jealousy and hatred that had been growing inside of Princess Luna, one of the two princesses of Equestria. Feeling like she didn't get the recognition she wanted, she transformed into Nightmare Moon, who wants to bring eternal darkness to Equestria. Princess Celestia, Lunar's older sister, had to do something about this. And so, she banishes Nightmare Moon to the moon, where she'd stay for over 1000 years. Yeesh. Now there is a lot to that side of the story, but we will come back to that later, since part 1 doesn't really focus much on the Nightmare Moon plot. Instead, this is simply there to introduce you to the characters and give you a first impression on the world this series takes place in. The episode opens up in Canterlot, a big city in the land all of the series takes place in, Equestria, a big land of ponies, magic and friendship. It's in the title of the show. In Canterlot, we get to meet our first of our six main characters. This is Twilight Sparkle. Moon Dancer is having a little get together in the West Castle courtyard. You wanna come? Oh, sorry girls. I got a lot of studying to catch up on. She's a bit of a bookworm. She's not very fond of spending much time with her. I'm gonna assume that these ponies are supposed to be her friends, but it's very unclear if they are, at least in this episode. Anyway, Twilight, as well as her assistant Spike, who, by the way, happens to be a dragon for whatever reason, also happens to be in pretty good contact with Princess Celestia, as she's being tasked by Celestia to move to Ponyville, where she's gotta make sure all the preparations are going alright for a festival called the Summer Sun Celebration. She's also tasked to make a few friends along the way, as her social skills are not exactly that great, as you've probably already seen in the very beginning of this. Ponyville is where Twilight and Spike I get to know five other ponies. Literally the first minute they arrive in Ponyville though. Hello? <laughs> well, that was interesting, alright. That scene never fails to make me laugh a lot. 
So now that Twilight and Spike have arrived in Ponyville, they go around finding out what goes on in the town and how the preparations are going. This is where we get to meet Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Rarity, Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie. Every one of them gets their own quick moment to shine and give us a good idea of who they are. For example, Applejack is a country girl who was raised in a barn. She lives there, she works there and she serves the food for the Summer Sun celebration. Part 2 of this premiere also reveals that she's incredibly honest in any situation but we'll get to that later. Pinkie Pie is one of the most energetic characters that I've ever seen in any cartoon ever and I love her for it. She's the party pony of Ponyville who loves to make ponies smile and she loves to party. Which gets immediately obvious when we first get to meet her when she's screaming at Twilight's arrival. Piggy Pie is also one of the best things that I've ever seen in anything. I know I'm only one episode into the Ponython, but I'm gonna call this right now. I just love the amount of joy and energy she has within her. And I love the voice acting for committing to this wonderful display of a character. Anyway, Pinky is just here to entertain us and to welcome Twilight with a welcome to Ponyville party. We also get to meet Rainbow Dash, whose idols are a flying group of Pegasi called the Wonderbolts and she makes sure that all of the clouds are out of the sky for the Summer Sun celebration. Oh, she's also very full of herself and she's a bit of a prankster. I guess I overdid it. Um, uh, how about this? My very own patented rain blow dry. No, no, don't thank me. You're quite welcome. I could go over all the characters, but you get the idea. All of the ponies in the show have their own passions, their own dreams, and their own jobs for the Summer Sun celebration. And letting you know right now what they do in this very episode is also very much what their everyday job is outside of the Summer Sun celebration. I absolutely love all of this. Every single character gets their own chance to shine, except for maybe Spike, who's just kind of there for the most part in this episode, but even he gets a quick moment to show his role in a portion of the series. Sending and receiving letters from Princess Celestia to Twilight. In the most hilarious way ever, by the way. <laughs> to have an entire episode dedicated to simply giving the viewer the time to get to know the characters is always a very welcoming one. And this episode was a very welcoming way to open the series up. The episode gave me a very good laugh here and there, and for newcomers of the show, I think you'll be very pleased with getting to know the characters so good in 22 minutes watching it. Are you new to Friendship is Magic? This would be a great episode to start with. If you've been a fan of Friendship is Magic for a while, I would say this is still worth re-watching if you're looking for a good laugh. However, all of that only counts for part one of this premiere episode. The two-part premiere episode of French Miss Magic has been separated into entirely different stories altogether for reasons that I have yet to understand. Part 1 does give some glances of the whole Nightmare Moon plot and it references some of it, but it doesn't do all that much with it. Instead, we just get to spend time with our six main characters. Alright, seven main characters. The Nightmare Moon plot, however, doesn't really begin until part two comes around. Nightmare Moon has completely taken over the throne of Equestria and Twilight, along with her five new friends, who from this point on I'm going to call the main six because everybody calls them that, gotta go out in the Everfree Forest where Nightmare Moon lives and where they'll find the elements of harmony. Now, I could go into a lot of detail as to what the elements of harmony are and what they're used for, but I don't think I'm all that qualified at all to do so because my knowledge on these things is quite scarce to be perfectly honest. All I can say is that they are six crystals of magic that are used to protect Equestria from all evil and disharmony. Celestia had used these elements to banish Nightmare Moon to the moon a thousand years ago and now the main six gotta find them to use against Nightmare Moon once more, defeating her once and for all. This is where the problems start to arise. You see, to obtain the elements of harmony, the main six would first have to go through the so-called Everfree Forest. A forest that's immediately built up as being quite dangerous for ponies. Being filled with poisonous plants, carnivorous beasts and cliffs like these. Unfortunately, they don't really live up to their claims. Because everything that happens in the Everfree Forest, from encountering these trees, this manticore, 
falling off this cliff and yes, even the shadow bolts, these don't come from the forest itself. Rather, it was all set up by Nightmare Moon in an attempt to prevent the main six from getting to the Elements of Harmony, which are located in the castle of the two sisters deep in the forest. This may not seem like that big of an issue, since Nightmare Moon is supposed to do this, she's the villain of this episode, and so she needs to stop the good guys from defeating her. But problems arise when you start to realize the buildup that the Everfree Forest receives. Let's think back for a second here. The Everfree Forest is built up to be the home of many dangerous oddities that are not often found outside of it. When the main six enters the forest, they sound terrified of the idea of even going there. And Rainbow Dash even states that they may never return from this adventure. Having Nightmare Moon make all of this happen greatly kills the expectations you could have. It makes you wonder if everything that happens there isn't being caused by another dark force like Nightmare Moon. The Everfree Force has a fantastic idea, but it's just wasted away in this very episode from the very beginning, which I believe to be a very big shame. But for the sake of staying positive about this, let's just disregard that little detail and imagine all of this was real. What do we have? Well, we have several obstacles that the main six have to go through and none of them are very interesting or feel that threatening. Okay, I will admit that part of that comes from a 22 year old man like myself with a huge love for in-depth fantasy. When it comes to that, I'm very biased and that kind of cripples my enjoyment in this particular show somewhat. And yes, I am aware that we're talking about My Little Pony here. This isn't a show like Avatar The Last Airbender. This isn't a show like Beastars. This isn't a show like Dragon Pilot or Sword Art Online. But again, I'm a very biased person when it comes to fantasy. And I like very deep, thoughtful stories. This ain't that. None of the obstacles, except for one, are all that great. The manticore is mad because of a splinter in its paw. These scary trees can literally be poofed away out of existence with laughter. A literal sea monster is upset for losing his mustache. So Rarity just gives him her tail to substitute for one. And then the cliff. Now listen here. What I'm saying to you is the honest truth. Let go and you'll be safe. Rainbow Dash meets up with a group of flyers called the Shadow Bolts who offer her a spot in their team. But she'll have to choose on whether she wants to leave her friends behind or not. Just let me tie this bridge real quick and then we have a deal. No! It's them or us. For a second, you can really see her struggle, thinking of a good answer to give. Because originally she wanted to fly with her true idols, the Wonderbolts, who she's loved for many, many years. The Shadow Bolts are about the closest things she could possibly join to the Wonderbolts. Of course, they are not a real team, but we'll disregard that for now. Eventually, she does make the decision to stick to her friends, leaving the Shadow Bolts behind, continuing her story to the castle. My friends hanging. But before she had come to that decision, you can really see her struggle decide on what she wants to do. Does she want to stick with her friends? Or does she want to join the Wonderbolts and never see her friends again? It's a pretty big dilemma for someone like Rainbow Dash. It's good. I like it. So once they finally arrive at the castle, they do find the Elements of Harmony, but there's only five of them. Twilight immediately assumes that what they mean is a spark of magic that the elements need. So she simply tried out a spell to see if anything would happen, but is stopped by Nightmare Moon during the process, being teleported away, and immediately after... Wow, imagine going all this way just to have that happen to you. So what's the main six to do next? Well, they all come together in this exact same room and the elements literally rebuild themselves around them. How? Well, it's because of a spark of magic that occurs from their friendship. Hey, what else were you expecting to see? It's still My Little Pony and the show is literally called Friendship is Magic. If there's one show that would have something to do with friendship being magical, it would be this. Mockery aside, the elements rebuilt themselves. The main six used them to defeat Nightmare Moon, 
Celestia comes in and Nightmare Moon appears to have turned back to Princess Luna. Also, can I just say that Princess Luna is the prettiest heckin' thing in the world? The Summer Sun celebration happens, Twilight is tasked to stay in Ponyville so she can study more about the magic of friendship, and that's the end of the episode. So how did things go for this two-part premiere? Well, I can at least say this. Part one of Friendship is Magic is perhaps the best opening to this entire show. If you're new to Friendship is Magic and you want to get to know the characters well enough and have a good laugh along the way, this is the episode for you. It's really really good. Part two, however, is an entirely different story as it feels like an entirely different episode altogether. The idea is still pretty much the exact same, where the characters get their own moment to shine so we can get to know them as well as we possibly can in the first two-parter, but it doesn't quite work well. Even though the characters get a very nice moment to shine, the story is being sacrificed. And I honestly think that's a real shame because this story could have been a lot more interesting. I like the idea that it has. Having the main six go through a dangerous force to obtain six elements they can use to defeat a powerful enemy, it sounds great on paper. In execution though, there are a fair few problems and it kinda cripples the two-parter as a whole. So here's my recommendation. If you're new to Friendship is Magic, just watch Friendship is Magic part one as your first episode. I think it's perfect if you're just getting started on the show and you need to get a decent introduction to it. Part two would be a very optional watch if you're interested in the story of it. I personally wouldn't recommend it, but who am I to stop you? And with that, the Friendship is Magic 2 part premiere earns a 6 out of 10. The two episodes separately would be a 8 out of 10 for part 1 and a 4 out of 10 for part 2. I'm Cohen from Phoenix Star YT. Thank you for watching this episode of the Ponython and I hope to see you in the very next video where we'll be taking a look at the very first true story of Friendship is Magic. Until next time, and as always, stay passionate.